One of my favorite Linux distributions is Arco Linux. It's actually what I run on my main production machine. I love Arco Linux, love the installer, love all the various desktop environments and window managers that they offer. And recently, Arco Linux had a new release. And with this new release, they include another window manager offering. Now they also have a DWM edition. And I love the DWM window manager. So I thought today I would take a quick first look at Arco Linux B with the DWM window manager. So let me switch over to the desktop here and I've loaded up a virtual machine here. This is Arco Linux B with DWM and when you boot into it for the first time the live environment is actually the DWM window manager. This is the DWM panel here at the top and then you get your welcome screen here that allows you to do things like update the Arch Linux mirrors, run Gparted if you want to go ahead and manually set up your partitions or just run the Calamares installer. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Calamares installer. All right. And we still have the welcome screen here in front. Can I just quit out of that? Yes. All right. And the Calamares installer in Arco Linux is quite a bit different than the installer in a lot of other distributions. You see all of these categories at the side. We're going to go through a, a bunch more steps in Arco Linux's installer than many other Linux distributions is because you get to pick and choose exactly what programs you want installed. And that's one of the best things about Arco Linux. That's why I heavily promote Arco Linux on the YouTube channel is because I just think the way they do this installer is really just ingenious. So the first thing I need to do is I need to select my language. American English is selected by default. That's okay for me. So I'll click next. The next thing we need to do is pick which kernel we want to use. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the standard Linux kernel without any NVIDIA drivers because I won't need NVIDIA drivers here in this VM. Also on my main production machine, I actually use an AMD card, so I, I actually don't need the NVIDIA drivers. So that's what I would do if you wanted to. You could pick the LTS kernel. You could pick the hardened kernel. There's a Zen kernel. So you've got several options here. So I'm going to click next here. The next thing we need to do is communication software. So these are things like Discord, Remina, which is a remote desktop, Riot desktop, which has been renamed now. It's actually Element. That's a matrix client. Now, for purposes of this VM, I don't need any of this. I see team viewers also in here. Zoom is in here. WhatsApp, Telegram, Teams. Uh, for now, I'm just going to bypass all of that. I don't need any of that development. Now, this is where you would install things like your IDEs, things like Atom and Genie, plain text editors like LeafPad, Notepad QQ, which is a Notepad++ alternative. Sublime Text is also here. I don't need any of these particular programs. I will install Notepad QQ just to make sure I have at least one plain text editor installed on the system. The next category is the Office category. The most important thing for most people is going to be LibreOffice. Do you want the LibreOffice suite or not? And if you do, do you want LibreOffice Fresh, which is kind of the uh, unstable branch? It's, you know, it's got the latest releases. Or do you want LibreOffice Still, which is more of a uh, long-term support? It's the stable branch kind of branch of LibreOffice. For me, I'm going to skip all of this because I don't need to install any of this in this VM. It's just going to take up a lot of space. The multimedia category. Now, this is a rather large category, but this is where you would install all of your audio video programs. So for me, if I was doing this on my actual main production machine, is what I would do is I would go in here and click on all the programs I need, like the Audacity Audio Editor, the Dead Beef Music Player, which I often use, Caden Live for my video editor. I use OBS, of course, to record my videos and stream my videos. I also like having VLC installed on the system. I like having MPV installed on the system. So I would probably install all of those. Now, since this is a VM, I'm actually not going to install most of this. I'll tick off the video editor, the audio editor, and OBS, but I will leave VLC, MPV, and Dead Beef to install. And probably the coolest thing about the Arco Linux installer is the internet category because you get to pick and choose web browsers and email clients. And for me, wanting to stick to free and open source software, I'm going to install Firefox. <laughs> That's going to be the one I would choose. Uh, if you wanted to choose something else, I mean, other free and open source alternatives, you have Brave and Chromium. I see Cute Browser down here. I really like Cute Browser. Those of you that really don't care about free and open source software and you don't mind running something proprietary, uh, Vivaldi is here. Uh, Opera is also here. 
I don't see Google Chrome. Yeah, there's Google Chrome for those of you that want that. For me, though, I definitely want to go with free and open source Firefox. For theming, I really don't need anything here. Just to make sure I have some kind of theming going on, I will just tick on the adapted GTK theme just to make sure I have at least one GTK theme. I'll go ahead and do the uh, arc icon theme just to make sure I have at least one icon theme installed on the system. For graphics, uh, we have Blender, Darktable, Digicam, and Krita. I actually don't need any of that. I wouldn't mind installing GIMP, but it's not actually listed here. I'm not exactly sure why GIMP's not there. So let me click next. We'll go to the gaming category in this VM. I don't need any of this stuff. On my main production machine, I might install some of the free and open source games like Xenotic here. Love that particular game. Really nice free and open source first person shooter, but I will skip that for now. For terminals, I like using Alacrity, so I will install the Alacrity terminal and then click next. And then we have our file managers. For a graphical file manager, I usually install PC Man FM. So I'll go ahead and install that. Do I need a terminal file manager like Midnight Commander or Ranger? Probably not. I'll just bypass that for now. For utilities, these are things like Bleach Bit, which will kind of clean up your system's cache and you know clean up any orphan packages and things like that. You have terminal process viewers like Glances and GTOP and, and things Things like that. For me, do I really see anything here that I absolutely need? For purposes of this VM, I actually don't think I need any of this stuff, so I will just skip that. And lastly, we have an applications category, and we have an accessory subcategory, and for that, I think I probably do want nitrogen to set my wallpaper. We have some extra fonts we could install. I don't need any of that. We have password managers. I don't need any of that. We have the uh, USB writer etcher. So you might want to tick that on if you need a program to burn uh, ISOs to images to USB sticks. And then, of course, you have some stuff regarding VirtualBox. So I'm just going to click next here. And finally, Arco Linux Dev. And this is software for Arco Linux developers and beta testers. I'm going to bypass that for now. Finally, we get to location, America, Chicago. I'm in the central time zone in the U.S., so Chicago will work for me since that is the right time zone. Uh, for the keyboard, English U.S. is correct, so I'm going to click Next. For partitioning, I'm going to do the uh, automatic partitioning, so I'm just going to let Arco Linux have the entire 20 gig hard drive of this VM, so... Do we want to swap or not? I love that the fact that it asks you that. Do you want to swap or do you not want to swap? I'm going to say swap to file. And then I'm going to click next. Now we need to create our username. I'm going to call my user DT. What is the name of this computer? I'm going to do DT-Arco. And for a password, let me do a strong and complicated password for privacy reasons. And then repeat that strong and complicated password. And then we need to decide, do we want to use that same password for the root account? That's fine, because it's such a strong and complicated password. That can be the password for the root user and my DT user. Then I click Next. We get a summary. Location looks good. Keyboard looks good. The partition scheme looks good. I'm going to click Install. And this portion of the installer is going to take a few minutes, depending on how much extra stuff you decided to install you know, up front, this process could take, you know, five, 10 minutes. It may take 20, 30 minutes. I, I don't know. So, but I didn't choose a whole lot of stuff. So I don't think this will take very long in my case, but I will pause the video until this portion of the installation has completed. And the installation has completed. And within the Calamaris installer, you need to make sure that this box here is ticked on that says restart now. And then when you click done here at the bottom right, it will restart the, the machine for you. In my case, a virtual machine. Those of you doing this on a physical machine, what you need to do is after you click done, at some point you need to unplug the USB stick that you're installing from. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Now I have rebooted and let me enter my password and we should log in to Arco Linux 20.11 with the DWM window manager. Let me click that off. I also no longer want to see this auto start screen, so let me uh, quit that as well. Now let me do a super enter to bring up a terminal. All right. And then I'm going to run the following command just to get a proper screen resolution here. So I'm going to do a xrander space dash s space and then 1920 by 1080. 
to get a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. And then if I do Super X, I believe, to kill a window, yes. Now, now Super X brings up the screen lock or the uh, session manager, so let me cancel that Super Q to kill a window. All right, how about Super Shift R to restart DWM? So it fixes the, uh, the background, although it didn't fix the conky. But I can fix that as well if I do Super P, which is typically the default key binding in DWM and in Xmonad for bringing up D menu. And that does bring up D menu. Let me run a kill all conky to kill conky. Now let me do Super Shift R to restart DWM. And now we just have the one conky. Okay, this is the way it, is. it should look out of the box here. And I will say, you know, a nice wallpaper. I do like the fact that they have the conky here, even though it's probably not something you're going to use long term. You're probably just going to want to get rid of that once you learn the key bindings. But first logging in, I think it's very important that you know Super Shift Enter opens your file manager. Control Alt V opens the Vivaldi web browser, although that's not going to work for me, is it? Because I didn't install Vivaldi. Yeah. So they do have some stuff here in the conky that is dependent on whether you actually installed that stuff or not. Not. For example, Super F2 opens up the editor. Let me try that. Super F2 does not open up the editor because whatever editor that's supposed to be, I don't think I installed it because the only one I installed was Notepad QQ. So I don't know what that's trying to call, but I don't have it. So that is one issue there is that some of the stuff in the conky, uh, while that's nice that that's there, but it's all it could throw people off. You know, I understand that I didn't install anything. <laughs> But other people may actually think their machine is broken because some of those key bindings don't work. So that may be something that the Arco team needs to try to address. Now that I know some of the basic key bindings, in DWM, the default layout typically is a master and stack layout. So if I open a few terminals here, so I'm going to do super enter a few times. And there's the first window, there is the second window, and there is the third window, and there is a fourth window. It keeps opening the new window as the master and everything else gets pushed to the stack over here on the right. And it looks like it's a very default kind of DWM config because in DWM's master and stack layout, the master is actually like 55% of the screen rather than an exact 50-50. <laughs> you can see how the master is just slightly bigger than the width of the stack. And uh, typically I change that, you know, I might make it an even 50-50, but that's just me. But let me see if I can actually find the config file for what they're using here. And I believe I actually did a search for this before doing this video because I wanted to make sure I could actually find this is that it is in dot config slash arco dash DWM. Let me CD into that particular directory. Let me zoom in if I can here so you guys can see this. And now that I am in dot config slash arco dash DWM, let me do an LS and there is the source code and let's do a vim config.def.h and I just want to take a look at the code here to see how much patching they've done because by default DWM out of the box you really do have to patch it quite a bit to make it sort of usable it doesn't come with uh, like oh, it only comes with like two or three layouts installed by default uh, out of the box it also doesn't come with any kind of system information it doesn't come with a sys tray in the panel it does come with a panel oddly enough being a suckless utility you think it wouldn't come with a panel at all it would make you go install a third party panel no they actually do have a panel built in but that panel really doesn't have much to it and just looking at some of what they've patched here it looks like they did include some system tray stuff here. So I think they did patch it to have this uh, system tray here. I've never actually patched DWM myself for system trays because I don't typically use them, but that's kind of neat that they added that. And I think they patched it for some font stuff too, because you have two font settings. You have this font setting here, which is just fonts. I think Noto Sans Mono Size 11, that's just your font here in the DWM panel. So that's the DWM font setting, but then you have D menu font right below it. And I think that's the font for D menu. So if I super P to open up D menu, so the D menu font can be different than the DWM font. They do need to patch D menu though for line height. So by default, D menu has a fixed line height. The line height is dependent on the size of the font that you're using. And that can be an issue because you have a D menu that's not the same height as the panel that's behind it. So you have this weird 
just ugly effect where you can partially see the panel behind D menu. Just patch D menu to allow you to set a line height. There's a line height patch that takes all of 30 seconds to patch it and it gives you a, an extra flag that you can set where you can specify that line height so it, you can set it exactly to the point where it perfectly covers up the panel. And then we have some coloring information. These five colors here that are also down here. So you, this is foreground, background, border, and these colors are set in these here. And this is the coloring information in the panel, also the border color around the windows, uh, depending on uh, the foreground, background, whether something's selected or not. Going a little further down, we get into some key binding information. And it does look like, just like the standard default DWM, the only layouts we have are the standard master and stack, a floating layout, and a monocle layout. So that's just the standard three layouts that come with DWM out of the box. I'm surprised they didn't patch that to include a few extra possibilities because there's a lot of different layouts you can have in DWM. Even if you're not going to have it enabled necessarily in the config, it would be nice if DWM was patched for it and maybe you had those lines commented out where the users could very easily turn off or turn on the layouts that they want to use. And I'm going to go into the key bindings here and just... Most of this looks like the standard key bindings for DWM. I see that mod key plus T toggles layout zero, which I think is just the standard tiling layout, the uh, master and stack layout. Let me open up a, a couple of windows here just so we can see this. So you do it LS dash LAH just to get something different on each screen. And this one, I'm going to cat out the bash RC just to have something different on each screen. So if I do super T, Nothing is happening if I do, what was the other key bindings here? Give me just a second. Yeah, I'm trying to read the key bindings here. I want to move this window over to the master <laughs> so I can actually read everything. I would assume super shift J and K. A super J and K, just the mod key J and K, move focus around the stack. Super shift J and K should move the windows typically. It does not. And you know what? I know the problem here. Let me uh, close these windows, the terminal windows. So this thing has not been patched at all. So one of the very first patches almost everybody patches DWM for is a uh, rotate stack patch. That's, that's actually the name of the patch, rotate stack. <laughs> because by default, when you have a bunch of windows open, you cannot shift their, their position in the stack manually. Like you can't hit a key combination and make this window here, you know, in this position up here or over here. You know, it doesn't come with that functionality. So I, you know what? Uh, well, we've looked at pretty much everything there is to look at here because the standard default DWM config is basically all I've shown you. <laughs> it doesn't have any other layouts. There were three layouts, by the way, which was what I was trying to show you guys. If I hit uh, Super T, which didn't work before, is because that's the master and stack layout. We were already in it. Super F is a full screen layout. And Super, is it M? It's the monocle layout, I believe, or maybe it was a different key binding. But if I do super T, that would get us back to the master and stack layout. Let me get rid of those windows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. And let me clear the screen. Oh, got the caps locks on. All right. And what I'm going to do is because this is pretty much a vanilla DWM config and it's really not patched for all the functionality that you expect most tiling window managers to have. I have my own build of DWM in the AUR, so I'm going to do a yay space dash capital S DWM dash distro tube. I'll just tab complete here and it should find that. Yep. DWM dash distro tube dash get. This is my own personal build of DWM that's patched for a bunch of extra layouts. It's patched for rotating the stack, you know, the ability to change the, the stack and everything like that. It comes with a lot of extra functionality that you're probably going to want. Uh, it looks like one of the requirements for my build is also the tabbed program. It's another suckless program, so I will go ahead and install that. There's also some fonts that are also requirements for my build. So let me go ahead and check out the diff if I wanted to, the, the package build, now that I've checked that out. 
you can actually read my package build here and if I go back up can I scroll back up you can see some of the dependencies for my build include the hack font the joy pixels font I also require ST D menu and tabbed D menu I know was already installed ST might have already been installed as well I have my own personal builds of all those though so do I want to proceed with this installation sure and now I need to give it my root password and hit yes one more time it's installing the fonts and then it should eventually get clone my DWM build because the source for it is over on my GitLab. But did the git clone and then it should do a sudo make install and it's going to throw all of that in the slash opt directory on the system. I did see a warning there, but it looks like it's going to build correctly though. Ah, it says there was an error. So one of the problems was when you're building my build of DWM is it tries to overwrite uh, the existing binary of DWM, also the existing documentation for DWM, the license and the readme and all of that stuff is already there. So I need to remove these particular files that it's complaining about here. So what I need to do is as root, I need to sudo rm for remove and I'm gonna remove user bin DWM space I'm also going to remove the man page for DWM because it's going to be a different man page for my build because it's going to have different options then I'm going to remove the X sessions DWM dot desktop file because my build's going to have its own X sessions file and then let's remove those and then I'm going to rerun yay dash capital S DWM dash distro tube dash get and it should build just fine now so I'll skip reading the uh, package build this time and it built correctly and now all I need to do is I need to log out quit out of DWM and log back in so if I do is it super shift Q to quit out of it a super shift Q quits an application to exit its super X on the, the keyboard and then click log out then let me log back in and it's still the Arco DWM this is not my DWM so for some reason uh, I guess the DWM Arco binary is still on the system. I'm not sure how we can overwrite that if we can. Let me cd into slash opt because that is where I put DWM dash distro tube. So let me cd into DWM dash distro tube dash get and do an ls and then from this directory I'm going to do a sudo make clean install. And it builds just fine super x to exit out and then let me log back in okay now this is my build of dwm that's weird that i had to actually even after the installation physically go into the slash opt directory and and find the source code for my build and actually do all of this now let me do super enter and that opens the st terminal because my build of uh, d WM actually has ST binded as the terminal rather than alacrity because I figure most people that use DWM are probably going to use ST rather than something like alacrity or termite. Let me quickly do an X render here one more time to get us a better screen resolution if I can type it correctly. Uh, misspelled. Got some letters out of order there. All right, super shift C for my key bindings closes a window and there is no wallpaper set. Let's run nitrogen and I will set a different wallpaper and that one looks good. So let's just go with that and let's do the scaled now super shift C and there's a nice bright wallpaper. Now the next thing I want to do is D menu. This is not my build of D menu. That's still what came with Arco. I have my own build of D menu to match my own build of uh, DWM as well. So let me open up D menu. I'm going to launch the alacrity terminal just because the standard ST terminal doesn't look good. Uh, I have my own build of ST actually, but let me, let me see if I can zoom in here. This time I'm going to do yay dash capital S D menu dash distro tube and I'll tab complete dash get. All right. And then I'll go ahead and do my build of ST is also in the AUR, which is ST dash distro tube dash get. Let's go ahead and install both of those programs. And it's going to say that my build of D menu conflicts with the existing build of D menu. It's going to override it. That's fine. ST, my build of ST is also going to override the default ST, which is fine too. Um, because by default, both D the build of D menu and ST that are here are just the standard suckless builds. They're not patched in any way. And I uh, definitely would rather uh, have my builds rather than these builds. 
and it looks like it's running the git clone because both my build of dmenu and my build of st also are on my GitLab, so it pulls that down from my GitLab. And then I have to give it a root password for it actually to install. dmenu-distro2-git are in conflict. Do I actually want to remove the regular dmenu? And you have to actually type y here because by default it's no if you just hit enter. And then proceed with the installation. And st is probably going to complain about the same thing and ask for confirmation in just a second. Yep, so st-distrotube-git and the standard st are in conflict, so remove st, y for yes, hit enter, then hit enter one more time. All right, and now when I do, in my case, super shift enter is my key binding, that is my D menu, and you can see how it matches the standard DWM. I've got some extra patching going on, I've got some extra coloring going on here, and I've got the numbers patch where it shows you the number of possible matches for what we're doing. And if I ran ST, you can see that this is a, a nicer build of ST than the one that just comes out of the box. So that is what you might consider doing. I'm glad Orco Linux has a DWM edition, but the fact that it is very vanilla. Where my DWM, of course, you know, I'm going to have some extra layouts and, you know, I can actually rotate the stack here. For example, if I did a LS here or LS dash LAH here, and if I did super shift J and K, now I can actually move this window through the stack where you can, you can't do that by default in DWM. It's crazy that that functionality is not built in to the window manager. Uh, I don't know why the suckless guys are so insistent that something so basic has to be added as a patch because I think that's one of the things that most people want. It's HTOP installed. I'm assuming it's probably installed out of the box. We should talk about system resource usage. Uh, 225 megs, right? <laughs> 225 megs of RAM, so... That's very, very lightweight, as you would expect for a standalone window manager. But if you want a great minimal installation, a great minimal installation of an Arch based distribution, and you want to start with DWM, uh, a vanilla DWM, and then maybe patch it yourself, I think Arco Linux uh, with the DWM window manager makes a lot of sense. But I'm not sure that's really the crowd they're going after because none of their other additions are so basic. None of their other additions you, do you really have to patch to make them work. Uh, their build of DWM, you have to patch to make it work. You're not going to like that very plain vanilla DWM. Also, the fact that their uh, vanilla D menu you know, was kind of hideous looking as well. It didn't have an adjustable line height. Uh, the same thing with the ST terminal. That's nice. That's there. You might want to patch it. You might at least want to patch it enough to where you can set a decent color scheme and maybe the right font size because by default, the uh, font size in ST is hideously small. And it's just something I, I think they probably want to address. But again, this was the very first edition of Arco Linux with DWM. I'm sure they're going to address many issues going forward. And I do applaud them on their work. They have something like 26 ISOs or something, something crazy over on SourceForge. They have so many different desktop and window managers editions. It's actually mind blowing. I have no idea how they manage all of that work, but somehow they make it happen. Now, before I go, I do need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Devin, Fran, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Akami, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, Donnie, Dylan, George, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick, VM, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this first look at Arco Linux B with the DWM window manager would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.